Hi everyone, this is Robin from Robin's Creative Cottage. So excited to share another card with you using the Car Decals Cricut Cartridge. And in the handbook on page 63, I'm going to be cutting out this little girl. And she's going to be on my card today along with the shadow. Now, if you look at it, she's got a little button on her belly, but I decided to omit the button and put a star instead because she's going to be my little 4th of July girl. So I took the star from the uh, Georgian Basic Shapes Cricut cartridge and just put a star right there on her belly instead of the button. So these are the pieces right here that I cut out. Just to ha I have the shadow here and then I have her and um, you can't really see the star that's on her belly very well from the image but there is a star there. So I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of ink around the edges of the shadow and I'm using the tea dye distress ink from Tim Holes just to give it a little bit of color. And so using my two-way glue pen just adding a little bit of glue around the girl so I can layer on top of the shadow. So I'm going to go ahead and add on her little smile. Put her smile on the fa her face. And then I'm just going to get my the little face feature, the template that I had, and just mark where her eyes were. And then here's the little star that I had cut out. And I put the star on her shirt. And then I just used a Copic marker to dot where her eyes would be. For my paper that I'm going to use, I am using the Recollections Union Square paper pad. i um, really liking this paper. So the measurements that I'm using to cut out my paper, um, the first one I actually had to recut. You'll see in a minute that I redo the other one in just a minute because I had it facing the wrong direction um, because I wanted a landscape card and not a portrait card. So I first put it together and realized, oh, that was the wrong direction. So then I went ahead and cut it out again. And I'll just use this for another card another time. Um, but the measurements for um, this is an A2 size card. And it's going to be the landscape view. So this is when I realized I had um, cut it out the wrong way. So I needed to recut it. So the measurements for the the paper with the print, the one I'm cutting now, is four inches by five and a quarter. And the red paper I cut out at four and one eighth by five and three eighths. So then for my A2 size card, it was just the, um, the base was eight and a half by five and a half. And then just fold it right in half. Okay, so now that I have it right, I went ahead and just sponged my edges a little bit. And then laid my little girl on and realized that she was the right direction on the card. So here's where I show you how to do the base of the card. I just took, I have a paper that's 8.5 by 11, and I cut it in half. So then it becomes 8.5 by 5.5, and, and then I just score it in the center which is four and a quarter. Fold it in half and that is the base of my card. I grabbed three pieces of cardstock, a, a blue and then that same red that I used on my background and then the cream colored that I'm going to be using and it's the same color as my um, base card. And grab my border cut punch which is, this one is made by Recollections. So going ahead and just lining everything up, cutting a border, and then I'll just try to decide how I want to lay them together. So then I just took my paper trimmer and then just trimmed them all about, um, oh, about three quarters of an inch is what I decided to do. And then here I'm just laying them together and deciding how I want to lay them on top of each other. And I, just, I decide just to 
just to overlap them just a little bit, just so the scallop border will show up. And then I'll go ahead and just put the blue one on as well. So then there's my red, white, and blue border. And then I'm going to lay that on the front of the card. I'll tape that down with my ATG gun. And then I'm just going to turn it over and trim off the extra. Here I have some twine from my craft spot. This is the Blueberry Divine twine and I decide to just wrap it around three times. Then just tie a knot and cut it off and then just adjusted some of the twine. And then I have a punch. This is an old Stampin' Up! Star punch. And I decided to punch that out in the blue and then I went ahead and punched it out in the red and then the cream colored cardstock as well. And then I layered them together with my, using my liquid glue, just put one on top of the other. I'm adding a button onto my layers and I'm just poking a hole. So, I, but I take my hole punch so I can punch a bigger hole. And here I'm going to put the twine through. I'm just going to thread the twine through the button and then through the stars back through the stars and then back through the front of the button. And then I'm just going to tie a bow. It took me a few tries. I maybe should have added a little bit of tape or something to my twine to get it through a little bit easier for me, but I fiddled with it a few times and then was able to get it where I wanted. Once I had my bow tied on my stars and buttons, I took a glue dot and put it right over the top of the knot where I had put the twine around the card. I'm using the stamp set Sweet Sentiments, set number one from my craft spot. And I'm using the words that read, have a happy day. And that's what I'm gonna put on my card. And I grabbed my vintage photo distress ink and I just stamped it once and it looked a little crooked so I just stamped it again and then grab my paper trimmer to trim the edges how I wanted them. Just a little bit trimming with the scissors on the one edge and then I grabbed my square punch and put it through and this is just going to get make it look a little bit like a banner. It's a quick tip that I, you, I learned from another YouTuber so not my original idea to use the square punch. So just deciding where I want to put it on my card, but I'll decide that in a minute. For the back of my sentiment, I grabbed some of my mounting tape and put it on the back of my little banner, and then just use my poker tool to take the backing off, and then just to find just the right placement of my sentiment. I'm going to have my little girl holding some paper windmills, just some little tiny ones, and I'll show you how I'm going to make them. Um, this one is the first one I made, just cute little tiny paper windmill, and she's going to be holding that, and I'll show you how I made, I'll make the second one. To make the little paper windmill, I have a one inch square piece of cardstock, and then I just score it from corner to corner. And then I'm just going to trim it. Um, Oh, about three quarters of the way on each score line. And then from there I just fold it over and just take the points to the center, just a little bit farther than the center, than that. And then I just take my hole punch and punch it right in the center. And then with a brad, poke it right through. And then there is my little paper windmill. Now I'm just working on the placement of where I want the windmills on my card. And I decide to get a couple little toothpicks. That's what I'll use that she'll, she'll use those to hold the windmills. So I go ahead and turn her over and add some mounting tape so that she can be popped up off my card. And just put that all over my the back of my little lady. And then for my toothpicks, I have my wire cutters, and I'm just snipping off the points of the wire cutters, and I just put a little bit of a glue dot on the back of my toothpick and attach it to the 
windmill and I'll do that to both of those and then once I get my little girl laid on there I'll decide how short I need to go with my toothpicks I kind of I just put a little mark on my toothpick where I wanted to snip it with my wire cutters and then I just held my hand over when I was cutting so those toothpicks didn't those pieces didn't fly all over my desk I would be able to find them easily is what my hope was so um, sorry I'm off camera here but I'm just adding a little bit more mounting tape where her arms are and then I'm adding a glue dot where the toothpick is where the end of her hand would be and then I added a little piece of mounting tape on the back of my windmill paper windmill so it would stay in place so I go ahead and just take the mounting tape off using my poker tool. That's what I find is really easy to do. And then I'll layer on my card. I'm trying to decide if I want her under the twine or over the twine and eventually decide over the twine is probably a better idea. So then I adjust the windmills where I want them and flip the card over and I'm just adding a little bit of scotch tape over the twine just so that I can roll my ATG gun over the the twine easily and then I'll just lay that right on top of my card base and then for the inside of the card I decided just to add um, one of those border strips that I had cut earlier I had an extra one I decided to add that and then I just punched out a blue star and then just glued that right on top of the border strip and then all I had to do is turn the card over and just trim off the extra border strip that's hanging off the edge and there is my card thank you so much for taking the time to watch my video and if you have any questions um, or comments just leave them here on this post on this video or on my blog that would be great have a great day, everyone.